Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk about the theory of these equations and how to solve them. Indeed, in today's part 6, we will talk about a very important solving method called the separation of variables. It tells us that we can solve a non-autonomous ODE if we can separate the two variables. And it turns out that the whole procedure is very similar to the method of the last video. However, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget to download the PDF version and the quiz for this video with the link in the description. Okay, then I would say, let's immediately start by considering a non-autonomous ODE. So you already know, we consider explicit forms, so we can write this ODE as x dot is equal to a function w that has two variables as its input. The one is the time variable t and the other one our function x. And now you know, if t is actually involved in this function w, then we speak of a non-autonomous ODE. And now the question for this method of today is can we separate both variables on the right hand side? Now, what this question actually means, I can immediately show you with an example. Let's say we have x dot is equal to t cubed times the function x squared. Then, in this case, we have the separation of variables because we have a product where in one factor there are only t's and in the other factor there are only x's. Of course, this is not always possible, but if it is, we can solve this one-dimensional ODE. And the method we have for that, we simply call separation of variables. And now you already know, it's applicable if the ODE can be written as x dot is equal to g of t times a function h of x. And as you might recall from the last video, we can state an ODE as an initial value problem. This means that we search for solutions that satisfy a given value. For example, we could say at the point t0, the solution should have the value x0. So now we actually choose a point in time t0 and then we say it should have a given value at this point. And now please recall from the last video, this is exactly what we call an initial value problem. Last time we have discussed that for an autonomous ODE and now we take a non-autonomous ODE of exactly this form. So two functions g and h are involved and both should be continuous. And now I can tell you, we will do exactly the same steps as in the last video, just with one small addition. First, let's immediately go to the interesting solutions where h of x0 is not 0. Otherwise, you should see there is a zero here on the right hand side and the constant function will be a solution immediately. In other words, this is actually the fun case where we have something to do. And indeed, the first thing we can do is to bring h of x to the other side. We know in a neighborhood of x zero, we can divide by h of x. Okay, then let's see what happens if we have a solution of this ODE and let's call it alpha, and you know t0 should lie in this domain of definition. This is a requirement of the solution, t0 should be inside this interval. Moreover, alpha should solve the initial value condition, so alpha at t0 should be equal to x0. In other words here, we can just write alpha instead of x in the ODE. However, instead of t, I now want to write s, simply because we want to do an integration again. In other words, the fundamental theorem of calculus comes into the game again. This means here, we just integrate on both sides. And indeed, now we will integrate from t0 to t. This makes sense because t0 was our fixed point in time and t is just an arbitrary point. And now you already know, on the left hand side here, we can do a nice substitution. Then the whole thing looks much easier because we just have to integrate the function 1 over h. And please don't forget, the boundaries are now x0 and alpha of t. 
And then on the right hand side, of course, nothing changes, but we see on both sides we need antiderivatives to solve the thing. So let's use capital F for the antiderivative of 1 over h, so for the one on the left hand side, and capital G for the one on the right hand side. And at this point, let's say it again, there the fundamental theorem of calculus is at work again. And indeed, for this theorem it does not matter which antiderivative we choose, because they only differ by an additive constant. And in fact, this helps us because we can put these two constants here and there into a single one. In other words, we simply write f is equal to g plus a constant c. So in this equation here, c could be any real number. And with that, you see we have solved the problem, we simply have to take the inverse of f now. Because then we have alpha of t on the left hand side. So maybe it looks a little bit complicated, but what you should recognize is that the whole procedure here gives us the solution alpha of t. And that's all, this is the method of separating variables. However, as I have told you in the last video, you don't have to memorize this formula, because you just have to know what to do in an example. And that's exactly what I want to show you now. So let's consider a very standard ODE, x dot is equal to x. However, now the factor in front of x should depend on t. And maybe let's look at the case that we have 1 third times t cubed. And moreover, let's also write our initial value condition as x of 0 is equal to x0. Okay, and now you already know, what you should do here is to rewrite x0 as dx dt. We do that because it helps separating the variables. Because now we can just informally multiply dt to the right hand side. And moreover, we can also bring x to the left hand side by dividing by x. So then it looks strange like that, but then we can just integrate on both sides. And now you know, this is just a short notation for the antiderivatives we have discussed before. So indeed everything is correct here and we can just use an antiderivative on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. And there you should know, we have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x on the left hand side and 1 over 12 t to the power 4 on the right hand side. And please never forget to add the constant in this step here. And moreover, at this point you should see, this is definitely correct, because it's exactly this formula here in a general case. However, what I want to tell you here is that you don't need to remember this formula at all, because you just need to remember these calculation steps. I think that's much easier, because it's a natural calculation anyway. Okay, then in the next step, let's use the inverse function of the natural logarithm, which is the exponential function. And moreover, let's also write alpha of t instead of x to denote our solution. And then we see this exponential function here is the absolute value of our solution. Hence, in the last step here, we just have to satisfy the initial value condition. In other words, we have to find the correct value of our constant c. So we do that and then it turns out that we have the exponential function with the factor x0 in front of it. And there we have it, this is the solution of the initial value problem given here. And you see, we have done the separation of variables exactly in this step here. Okay, now in order to close this video, let's look at another example. Now let's take x dot is equal to sine of t times e to the power x. So in fact, it's more complicated than before, but we also recognize that the two variables are separated. In other words, we should be able to do our informal step here again. So we have dx divided by e to the power x is equal to sine of t dt. And then you already know, you write the integration symbols and go to the antiderivatives. So on the left hand side we have minus e to the power minus x. And on the right hand side we have minus cosine of t. And again, please don't forget to add our constant c here. And then in the next step, we just have to find the inverses again to find our solution x. Or to say it in better terms, 
to find our solution alpha of t. And for that we get minus the natural logarithm of cosine of t minus our constant c. And there I can tell you, sometimes it's helpful to change the constant by a factor. So in other words, you simply introduce a new constant. So we just change the name and then we don't have this annoying minus sign there. This is helpful because now we want to find the correct constant in order to fulfill our initial value condition. So we put in 0 in the left hand side and this should be equal to x0. And now we simply solve this equation for c tilde. Now, since the cosine of 0 is 1, we immediately have the solution here. Namely, c tilde is given as an exponential function. More precisely, it's e to the power minus x0. And then we have to subtract the cosine of 0. Okay, and then we see, we put that in, and then the whole initial value problem is solved. And with that, you now know the method of separating variables to solve an ODE. And in the next video, I will show you how you can solve so-called linear ODEs. These are also very common and therefore it's very important to know how to solve them. And with that, I really hope that I see you in the next video. Have a nice day and bye bye. Thank you.